Hi, I'm Brent. This is part three of our video updates on how to improve a Subaru EJ series engine with the billet block upgrade. And beside me, you would have seen in part one and part two the options and the comparisons between this block assembly and the head separate. So in the next part of this video, now we're going to talk about assembly of the heads. And also over on my right, we're going to talk about the way the variable cam control works, the options with the water pump and the options with the oil pump. And we're going to talk a little bit also about the variations and options with different head studs and head bolts holding the head onto the block. So let's just talk about what briefly what we've spoken about before. We started off with the um, CNC machine billet aluminium block from Will All Racing in part one. We then spoke about in part two the options of high flow heads with cams and porting and valves. And now in part three, we've assembled the, the uh, left and the right hand head on the block. And you can see from the front, we've got the nose of the crankshaft, the uh, cam um, assemblies where the uh, variable cam control pulleys will be fitted. And of course, the whole head assembly has been um, fitted as well. And underneath, we'll talk about the sump in just a sec. So what I want to touch on um, is the way these things connect together. And one thing that I failed to point out in our part one video was the external components on the block assembly is very easy to see. But one thing I failed to point out is internally between these two halves, there are dowels that guide the two components together to obviously lock them in place. And on the billet block assembly, they are a lot more substantial and a lot more mechanically reliable than the original Subaru cast block assembly. So that's just one thing. Um, which is an additional benefit other than the external, external obvious benefits that we spoke about in the video. So um, let's talk about the heads. So we've spoken about the high performance benefits of fitting the heads and these heads have now been assembled with uh, the 14mm ARP heavy duty um, head studs. And what I wanted to show, and I'll get my video cameraman, is down here um, you'll see quite close is the size of the, um, the head stud and inside there you'll see it's got a uh, Allen key socket. Now these are some of the little things that make it easy from your engine builder to assemble these components because um, you'll see it also comes, this one's probably a little bit easier, see it's got a a, um, a multi-hex um, nut that goes onto the stud and that stud there goes all the way through the head and into the block. Now let me just show you um, what we're talking about. Now this is an ARP 11mm head stud which you'll see has also got the Allen key assembly in the end. Just it makes it just that little bit easier to screw it into the block. And this is the original factory Subaru part that this is designed to replace. Now, these are a stretch bolt. They're only designed to be used once. So if you're doing an engine rebuild or you've pulled the heads off, they should not be reused. You can see there are multi-hex um, headed bolt, which means it's got, mo it's got 16 faces instead of eight faces to the head of the bolt which makes it easier for your engine builder to assemble and they are obviously got limited strength when it comes to holding the head onto the block because this is what resists all the combustion pressure and depending on how much grunt you're pushing has a huge effect on head gasket reliability so typically an often common replacement is the ARP um, heavy duty studs now these are also available in 11 mil and 14 mil and as you can see they come with a fully machined washer and a multi-hex nut after you've put that in and obviously that's what holds the head on. Now what we've got in this is the replacement 14mm ones and also there's a small difference as well. These are a fully rolled thread, not a cut thread. So a rolled thread, if you look up your engineering specifications, is a stronger design thread because the grain of the um, metal is then um, strongly aligned in the way the thread is actually physically created on the um, stud itself. It's not cut and um, I'm sure you can look that up on Google and understand that a little bit better yourself. So these are some of the things you need to consider. Now of course um, when you're going to build an engine like this and you want to be able to put a fair bit of boost, combustion pressures, 14mm head studs are obviously one of the things you need to seriously consider. So let, that's it about the heads. Now let's just talk about what comes on the front here before we build the front of the engine. So on the front here with these dowels we fit the uh, variable cam control. Now on this particular engine um, it's got variable inlet and variable exhaust cams. So you've got the left and the right hand side um, inlet and exhaust and these have got veins inside them that operate under oil pressure which is controlled 
by the um, this assembly on the top of the head, which is then controlled by the factory EC. And effectively, what it does is this solenoid here modulates uh, oil pressure off the from the internally in the engine being directed down through the camshaft and out through the front of the nose of the cam um, through one of those galleries. And I just can't remember which one it is. One's the outlet, and one's the return, and that then fits and supplies all pressure in through the back of that assembly in there. You can see those galleries inside there, and that then controls the um, advance and retard of the cam pulley whilst the camshaft is spinning. Really, really good feature from a bottom end performance point of view. Once the car is on full boost and open-ended load, variable cam control is not as critical um, as a benefit, but one of the big bottom end benefits with this particular engine is the uh, bottom end variable cam control to bring the car on boost early. Now some of the earlier model Subarus only had a variable inlet and then right back in the GCA prior to 2000 they had um, static cam control with no variable cam control at all. Now those parts then get bolted on the front of course the rest of it gets put back together and of course part of that assembly is the water pump. Now the water pump fits on the front of the engine. Um, now there's several options when it comes to water pumps. Now, depending on what year model Subaru engine you have, it may have a pressed vane control assembly inside that, or it may have a cast vane. Now, it's generally accepted that the cast vane water pumps are more efficient and more reliable than these ones. So if you're spending this type of budget on an engine rebuild, this is the water pump that you probably want to opt for. Um, and generally, overall, you do a bit of search on the internet on water pumps, these are the ones that you want to use. And they're interchangeable, but there's one thing you need to be aware of. Some water pumps have got different outlet and inlet galleries on these hoses, and depending on the year model you're fitting it to, um, you may have to change some of these fittings depending on the water pipes that you've got running on your original factory engine. So. That's one of the parts that bolts on the front. The other part that bolts on the front, which is then driven by the flat part here on the um, crankshaft, is your oil pump. Now, oil pumps come in 10, 11, and 12 mil rated sizes, and effectively what it is, um, it's a generic description for the capacity of the oil pump to pump oil, and typically the higher the size, like the 11s and the 12s come out of the STIs, or the spec C engines. So of course on this engine we're going to run a 12 mil oil pump because it's got the ability to pump more oil because being 12 mil it's got more capacity. But one thing is you need to be conscious of is if you're fitting a higher spec oil pump to an earlier model engine, sometimes bigger is not always better. So you need to consult your engine build specifications on whether you're going to go for a 10, uh, 11 or 12 mil oil pump. So there you have it. So that's what gets bolted on the front. The next step is we're going to then put the tensioners and the idlers all back to set together and put the cam belt on. But what I'll show you underneath here is one of the things that you need to consider is on an engine build of this spec is what type of sump you're going to use. And we normally recommend the Kill B um, motorsport sump assemblies. Um, some of the earlier model Subarus, and I encourage you to check out some of our videos, were well known for having um, fatigue on the oil pickup, um, which is on the vacuum side where the engine sucks the oil into the oil pump and then distributes it under pressure and the oil pickup is known to crack around the welded assembly on the pipe and then it falls off in the sump and then of course you end up with an engine that's trying to draw oil out of the sump in the engine um, but can't get the oil and you end up running a big end bearing and doing a lot of damage to your engine so um, check out the video on um, the oil pickup um, known problem on early model Subarus but one of the advantages of the Killer B assembly is it's got a much stronger um, oil pickup assembly. It's got some windage tray opportunities with some modifications underneath um, to uh, control the oil as it falls out of the engine when the engine is operating. These are all the things you need to consider again from a power, performance and reliability point of view. And the other opportunity is this uh, sump design works with um, uh, your different extractor designs as well. And then just see this shape here allows for a lot of different choices whether you're going for um, um, equal length or non-equal length extractors and then of course it fits with a lot of original factory parts as well um, pretty good reliable package so the next step we're going to put on this engine is um, we'll fit the extractors we'll fit the front of the engine and we'll start assembling the top end of the engine as well so if you want to do some more searching I encourage you to look at part one and part two of the videos 
We'll load some uh, static pictures and link them back to our website off the bottom of this um, video on this channel. Of course, you can go to the MRT Performance website and punch in a search command and you can search from hundreds of thousands of different parts. It'll search the website, it'll search the parts database, but of course you can put in your year, make and model and choose um, your particular model car, whether it's a Subaru, Mazda, Mitsubishi or hundreds of other model cars, and we'll give you a list of parts that are associated with that particular model, whether it's White Line, DBA, GFB, and of course we also offer the availability of buying a lot of these parts as well. Um, for now, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. My name is Brent Middleton. I hope this video has helped you somewhere where you, wherever you are in the world. Um, stay tuned for our next video update where we'll talk about um, the next stage of this engine build. Bye for now.